Um, my sister actually just dragged me in here. I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> um, she said that uh, I really like that Sam Whitler, he's really a hottie. Yeah. Your sister, yeah, said that. <laughs> Yeah. No. no. Full on blowjob. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind her just giving you a blowjob. <laughs> We've got a big, spacious <laughs> table <laughs> here. Just give her like a whole, you know, like a whole blowjob. I mean, she paid for her ticket. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something I haven't done three times today already. <laughs> When I opened up for the Q&A, I probably should have set some ground rules. Yeah. Like, uh, no. Physical interaction. Yeah. 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 For your sister. <laughs> it was quick, but it was really good. charming and, um, you know, original and fresh, because there is a lot of zombie stuff going on now. And um, I thought they did it with, like, some grace and some humor and um, a nice little clothing montage at the end. <laughs> and, uh, um, but it's really fun. I, I, it's actually pretty amazing because I, I'm maybe the only character that really got to transform in that way and become a bunch of different supernatural things throughout the series. Um, and the journey continues. Yeah. Yeah, this year she transforms into a car. <laughs> and it makes the sound. Well, Michael Mason is your showrunner, right? So. By the way, I love you right as a transformer. <laughs> did you actually have input on the clothing that you would die again? In? Yeah, um, I did. What was really great was uh, throughout season three, I was able to really design what Sally's look would be with our costume designer, Janet Campbell, and so there were a bunch of meetings that we had where we decided what her look would be and we consider her budget and the fact that she lives with two guys, so a lot of the times I would you know, take their shirts and cut them and wear their boxers and um, you know, their thongs and stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, it was really nice to have that input and also the clothing that, that I dyed in. They wanted it to be dressed, they wanted it to be purple in homage to the Dream Reaper episode of season two when Sally goes into her alternate uh, reality because that was definitely a fan favorite. And of course there needs to be a sweater, but what you don't know is the sweater is not is to hide harnesses for stunts. How about that? You just shared that with the... Yeah, that's what it's for. That's pretty cool. Uh, questions? <laughs> uh, no, it's also to, it was also to hide the pit stains, too. <laughs> it was to hide the harness. Yeah, just two and Niagara and Falls and, you know, and, then, then, and just a sewer. And the other arm that actually grows out of her back. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea she wears our underpants. Yeah, no. That's weird. <laughs> yes, sir, with the glasses. <laughs> I would be interested in that. <laughs> I think Hunter has the most invested in that. The whole season is just you being a matchmaker. This is like, why don't you guys air? I'll I'll just go upstairs for a minute. Why <laughs> work Oh, I need too much food. <laughs> Salad. Salad. Three of them. That's, so, yeah. Are we 
are we clapping or are we putting up hands? No, I'm kidding. They're kind of going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, who doesn't want to see that connection dance? No, the cheer or something. Who doesn't want to see that? Who doesn't want to see does do, does not? You know. People. People are like, no. Now, who does want to see that? Now, now, now. Now, now get up and everyone. Now, who wants fight. to see, who wants to see this? A Josh and Eva. Two late. Oh. <laughs> now, actually, you want to see something really funny? This is a game that we play on set a lot. It's called How Close Can You Get? Yeah. How close can you get? Well, I don't know, I suppose you should just see it. There was him and there was Aaron Ashmore. And, uh, and they've been asking themselves over the past four years, we were this close to a perfect cast. You know what I mean? So close. So close. You know what I mean? One Ashmore shot oh. of a perfect show. 
No, I was actually really psyched about uh, Aaron, Aaron, and we all actually, Aaron, and both Ashmore boys now uh, are, are very close. And uh, yeah. Aaron obviously went on to do Warehouse 13, and, and uh, who's Sean's on the Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So those guys are fine. They're doing fine. But yes, I was to answer your question. Huge Superman fan. Yes. Huge, yeah. huge Superman fan. Um, so yeah. It was always Sammy's dream to play Jim Wilson. Yep, it was. I remember seeing that in the theater, and, and the thought, I've said this to you, the thought that I had when he started doing his thing was like, oh, dude, this guy is absolutely aware that he's in a Superman movie. And, you know, in a good way. No, 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 yeah. You kind of have to know that, yep. you know? Yep, yep, yep. The, the implication is that some people didn't know they were in super, a Superman movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no comment. But uh, Brandon was great. You were great. Brandon was great. How was I? Man, you were fine. You were horrible. <laughs> you, were, you were barely even in it. Didn't work. <laughs> My name was Cal Pet. <laughs> <laughs> they totally cut me out. They, they basically cut you out. <laughs> Megan, would you want to do a superhero movie? Absolutely. She yeah. was almost an X-Men. <laughs> almost. <laughs> really? Yeah, Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say bug? They gave it to Ashmore. They gave it to Ashmore. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Ashmore. Ashmore's in that movie. Yeah. Mm. We got one right there. Hi guys, I was wondering if any of you ever watched the UK version of the show and what you thought. Yeah, we all have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't watch it when we were doing season one because we wanted to sort of come up with our own, you know, characters and not mimic or, you know, have that influence us. But when we were done, I bought them the box sets and we, we've seen everything. It's really We all became big fans. Huge and fans. if you're wondering why they're not on the show anymore, it's because we killed them. Yeah, we killed them. <laughs> they were too good. They were, see, no, listen, they were just, they were too good, so. We're not great with competition. No. <laughs> murder. Murder is a form of competition. <laughs> yeah, it's murder it's the is highest the form of competition. The highest form of competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's when you know you win. Yeah, exactly. When you touch or when you touch. murder someone. Yeah. That's how you know you win. Kids. Question. Uh, let's get to someone else and then come back to you. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Did you guys hear that? He said, is Josh stuck in his werewolf forever, or is he just stuck in his werewolf for longer? I believe that was it. Uh, I can't really say. Uh, I think kind of, well, what can I say? You um, bo both. Is that? Yeah, that's, that's accurate to say. Yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're locking in the stuff that we were shooting just the other night. Yep. So, uh, I, 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 I will say I think what they what they did, how they figured that scenario out, was actually really cool. I was very, that's an element about this season that I'm actually really proud of and excited about. So, yeah, I think you're gonna like it, buddy. Would you, do, would you want him to stay as a werewolf? Yeah. And what, what do you want? He doesn't know. He's like, I've never seen the show. You've <laughs> seen the show. Yeah. You have shaved. I said, this is the last time I saw you. So that is yeah. somewhat revealing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. just because there's less hair on my face. It's somewhat revealing. It is somewhat revealing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somewhat revealing. That's really interesting. A big beard at the beginning of the season. Where'd you get that idea? Guys, <laughs> next season, I'm going to have a huge mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Horn stash. Uh, yes, ma'am, in the blue tank top. I'm the least single person. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> We've been, it's been. You tell me this now? I know. Oh. I'm just finding out. I know. Right I'm, uh, I'm actually not, I feel very naked because I'm not wearing my wedding ring right now. Because he was coming uh, to Philadelphia, right? right? Yeah. 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 No, I was, was going to meet people. <laughs> Just a city of brotherly love. So yeah, exactly. no, uh, I, have, I have two kids. I'm, I'm way deep. <laughs> no, I came. I came yesterday right from set. I've been wearing my set wedding ring, so I take mine off before I come to set, and I wear my.
my fake one, and they were like, leave it, because I've been, I've been accidentally taking my fake one home with me all the time, and, uh, and so they were like, this time leave it, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and so I did, and now I'm, I'm, I'm naked. What do you, how do you, I knew an actor who actually had, this, <laughs> this is weird, but he would sew his wedding ring into his underwear, because he didn't want to lose it, presumably? I, I don't know. You, well, I almost lost my fake one the other day because I was getting I was getting wolf makeup applied. I think you can say that, right? Yeah, I was getting wolf makeup on my hands. Sometimes that happens, guys. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, you know, I'm getting makeup all over this thing, so I, I took it off and put it in my pocket. I was wearing sweatpants, which are hyper-attractive. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and it, and, it, and it went missing. And, uh, and then one of the ADs found it. Little Shanna found it, and it was, it was like loose in one of the vans. This is so boring. I'm really sorry. Oh I'm really sorry. God, I'm like sorry. Loose like, in a van. I know. We were literally half of you just fell asleep. The stink's uh, gone. The stink's out. Please. Let's get a question no, from none you. None of us are sick. Yeah. None of us. No. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, since I got to meet Katie at the March convention, any idea about Katie Isabel's character for this season? Since she sort of got out of the taxi cab in Boston. I can answer that one. <laughs> no, yeah. I'll tell you, but you gotta promise not to tell anyone. Because <laughs> um, I, I saw the she... interview with you that was on the uh, sci fi about it, and you weren't talking about it then. That's yeah, what I asked. Yeah. Was working with her last night. Oh, okay. And, so. uh... Everybody was working with her. I mean, I don't want to be crude or anything, but we like. We, we, yeah. we, we, <laughs> She's great. Katie, Katie is a lot of fun to work with, and uh, what's fun about her is that uh, she gets to play a very different thing. <laughs> it's about as specific as I'm going to get. But right, yeah, so Katie's yeah. around. Katie's okay. definitely around. Big time. I just thought I got strep throat for a sec. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. By the way, you're all sick now. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a good Oprah move. Yeah. And now you have an infection. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for the cast of being human. Yeah. What, what was the, uh, tell us about the very first moment that each of you met one another. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys, by the way, wow, they're breast, breast <laughs> I mean, listen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> two is better than one. Two is better than one. Oh, baby. I love it. So good. Um, the first moment that we were just staring at those the whole time. <laughs> um, we all met at the screen test. No, we didn't. We met before that, Megan. Yeah, we met. Uh, why don't you just so why don't you just calm down, down yeah. and just bring your enthusiasm down to a manageable level. Basically, me and this guy met. We met sort of like how it is on the show. We got to know each other first, and then this Joker shows up, and we're like, do we do we have to have her in front of the show? Yeah, I'll tell you right now, we don't need her. We don't need her. <laughs> we're doing fine. Um, but I remember, I remember, I sat down and uh, and. Um, you know, I, I think uh, Huntington, what did he do? He saw some gray in my hair, so he goes, you going gray? And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> no. What was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> you had a little, because you used oh, hair products. Right. And there was a little. Yeah, I, okay, so I have a friend. My hair friend, product. My friend, Brian. <laughs> you know how, like, when it's like, um, <laughs> yeah, a hair product. It's just something Sorry about hair. About uh, and, uh, but it still no, works. So, no, so yeah. Oh no. It, 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 uh, so no. And, and, and I, and, you know how when you get like when you have like a traumatic thing happen, like sometimes some people will have like one like patch of like patch of like white in their hair. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like when they had some sort of trauma or like yeah, exactly. some like yeah. yeah, like when they see it in the tunnels underneath. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, <laughs> sure. And I, I have a friend who has like a patch in his hair. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Kyle. Uh, past winter. Yeah. Has, <laughs> uh, so, um, so I, I thought he had that, and I was like, we were sitting next to each other, we were in front of like the network people and the writers, producers, and I was like, hey, do you have like a little gray spot in your hair? Meaning that, 
But he was like, and then we answered. And I was just like, well, no, but thanks for doing that here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. And that was the first thing that we said to each other. Ever. Instantly took the piss out. And of immediately we just started like giving each other shit. And I remember glancing over at the writers, and they were just like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, this I, might work." And so suddenly we started reading together a lot more. And then, and then later at the screen test, you showed up, and you were just so excited to, to meet us and everything. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> no, Look, no, you were no. so excited. I was just judging. I was not. I am only judging by how big your teeth were, okay? Because <laughs> and maybe maybe your 100% excitement is a normal person's 50. That's true. That's fine. That's true. But you. No, I was not excited to meet either of you. I remember seeing when I came and met you in the screen test. When I saw Whitworth, he was completely silent. He wasn't speaking to anybody. He was miserable. <laughs> and then I remember looking at him secretly. And I was wondering, I was looking at the color of his face compared to his arms because I was wondering if he was wearing makeup. Only on my arms. No, because I, I thought you were wearing like white makeup to look that white. I was in white face. But then I saw. Stupid. Super racist, a little more socially acceptable, but it shouldn't be. Um, but, and then it turns out he wasn't. He's really that white. Sammy was telling everybody about a dream that he had. No, 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 no. You were sleepwalking and you went out the window. Yeah, yeah. Out the window. That's a story. And I was like, oh, God. Yeah, that was bad. It's, um, it's interesting because Sam was telling that story to such an extent in other stories that he had to be, what was it, three times that the receptionist had to say, you need to turn oh, yeah. it down, there are auditions. She, she, brought, she brought over a sign Silence. that said, Silence, yeah. and put it in front of him. <laughs> I'm, I'm a chatty cat. <laughs> but then when, when someone would ask him, you know, she'd be like, you really need to be quiet, there's auditions. He goes, I'm sorry, I just really want the part. <laughs> I did. And then you and got it, so and I got it. there it is. Yeah, here we are. Turns out. Yeah. So you were sleepwalking in this dream. Oh yeah, no, I was. I sleptwalked out a second story window. <laughs> yeah, it was That's terrible. Fine. I'm fine now. <laughs> yeah, I was emotionally scarred for a while, nice. but uh, yeah, I landed on my ass. I was, I was completely naked, and because uh, that's how I sleep. And uh, and this was this was a long time ago. This was uh, now he sleeps in a full night. <laughs> yeah, he sleeps. He sleeps, he sleeps back in, wild in a straight jacket. Before kids. He sleeps, it was before kids. And uh, and yeah, and, and I, was, I was I was I was I called my wife and I mean this was probably eight years ago and I said uh, you know I'm going to bed. Da, 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 wake up in the middle of the night. I'm like whoa. I remember this. I remember thinking, well, I need to get out of this room. <laughs> this will not do. This will not do. Uh, and I remember thinking there was some, something very, someone very threatening outside the door. So I opened the window and took off the screen and literally, like, basically jumped out the window. I hung there. Naked. <laughs> As soon as I hit the ground, I woke up and I was like, uh, get naked, naked outside, naked outside. It was in my, luckily, it was in my parents' house in Hampshire. So I like run around the house. This is like two o'clock in the morning. I find the spare key and go in and, and uh, call my wife and I said, You're not going to believe what just happened. Wait, she was inside and you called No, her. she was in LA and I was in New Hampshire. That's an amazing story. I mean, it, it, oh no, no, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was legitimately terrifying. It was, it was, uh, it was bizarre because I was, it was, and it was the only time, I, by the way, that I've ever slept walked. Slept, slept walked. It just it happened. I think that, I think that that house is haunted, though. No shit, I think that house is haunted. I think, that, I, think I was possessed by Megan. <laughs> who was trying to, who was trying to kill me? But I, I just wanted to see what you would like, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know, the hour before that, she had been possessing me, just touching myself. I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. How about an audience question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I wanted to know because obviously you're all actors and performers. Of all the auditions that you've ever been on between any other shows or anything, what is the most craziest and weirdest that you've ever That's a great question. I injured a casting director. 
And for real, it actually did happen. Um, there was a, a role I was going out for for some movie that a friend of mine was directing. Or no, he wasn't directing; he was producing it. And uh, uh, the director was there, and he was this this, this gentleman guy. And, he, and and in this scene, I was supposed to be like drunk and on heroin and every drug you can imagine, and just losing my mind, having this very emotional talk with this this other dude. And uh, so I. And I, I was shooting something else at the time, so I came in, no sleep, arrived there, and he's like, okay, just go crazy. So I went crazy. I mean, really went crazy. Tears and snot are flying everywhere, and I was losing it. And I was like, that's about as far as I, I'm really willing to go. So we did that. And then, and then afterward, he's like, that's um, so interesting. Uh, I think I want to see you just lose your mind. Just then, just boom. I mean, explode your brain all over my face. And, uh, Make sure that uh, I cannot see anything but your memories uh, against my eyeballs. <laughs> so he said something really weird like that. I'm like, more? He's like, yeah, I just said more. Do it. And so I did. Right. So I'm not so long. All right. I guess I'll really go for it. And at this one point, <laughs> and I'm reading with the casting director, and my buddy's back there, and uh, at one key point. <coughs> I, uh, I got angry in the middle of losing my mind, and I smashed, I just smacked this chair out of my way as I was rushing the casting director. And it was a big metal chair, which I didn't, had no concept of how much it weighed. So I knocked it out of the way, it rolled, slammed the table, rolled again, and struck her right in the knee. It's a true story. And there's a moment, and she just continues. She's just like, what else do you want to say to me? You know? and, and I just kept going and had, did the scene, and then, and then as soon as the guy yelled cut, she went, Oh, God! Oh, God! God. I'm like, Oh, gee, I didn't know it was that bad. And, and so, you know, at that point, I look up at my buddy, he's just like, you know, that's, and, that's such a meat cute. A meat cute? Yeah, like a meat cute when you read something and you're like, Oh, they met and it was such a cute meat. <laughs> Meet cute. That's what's meet cute. Cute. Meet cute. Because oh, exactly. now, in theory, you're like, then I went. We went on a date. Now uh, she's, uh, no, she's my wife. So meaty that cute. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh. But it was. But eventually, so the first thing I did as soon as I left the room was like, rush to the drugstore, get a bunch of like, you know, aspirin and pain medication, and then I grabbed some flowers and went right back. And I was like, ha ha. Sorry. Did I break anything? And, I, and apparently, as soon as I left, the, the, the only good news is that she was like, oh, good, and I leave the room, she's like, at least it was really good. Ah. Did you get it? No, but apparently the, the producer, uh, it almost got me another gig on something else, but I wasn't available. So it's, it, she just got a broken knee out of it. And she didn't yeah. break anything, but it really hurt her, which sucks. What do you I, got? What do you got? Hugo. Hugo Slavia. Well, I was, when I was auditioning for Hugo, for Martin Scorsese. Uh, no, I, um, I don't know, I don't have, I don't have a good story like that, I'm trying to think. I, I my, my, uh, it, was, it was mortifying, actually. My phone rang one time, some more. Oh, rang one time, <laughs> my phone rang one time in the middle of an uh, It was actually just a meeting, I wasn't even reading for this thing. And the director, and it was a cool movie, too. I actually don't think it ever got made, but, um, uh, he was kind of, he was kind of a dick, <laughs> and, uh, and he was like, and he was like, and my phone rang, and I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. He goes, huh, I hate that. <laughs> so, and I got, I got really angry. I was like, because I was like defensive. I was like, I, I was like, that never happens to me, dude. I was like, and I, I forget what I said. It was something like, pump the brakes. <laughs> I was so mad. I was so mad. I was like, "How dare you like think that's me? Like that, I'm not that guy, but I was that guy." <laughs> that's a problem. Like I yeah, why totally so was, I was so mad when he said that because he was he was so mean about it. I was like, "I'm what? sorry. I wasn't like I, I forget." I mean, the movie was really cool. The movie was like about this ghost in Afghanistan. It was really neat. Why didn't I audition for that? That would have been perfect. Afghanistan. Ghost. ghost? Nailed it. Am I gonna be ever thrown a chair at someone or been inconsiderate in a meeting? Well, oh, I heard. Well, yeah. I mean, I've thrown stuff at people, but well, not in, in the process of getting a part or trying to get a part. No, no, I'm very polite. 
she means she sleeps with everyone she auditions for. <laughs> Pretty girls to get work. Yeah. So be polite. Be polite. Be polite. And also be sleep. polite. It's an important acting tip for all the yeah. aspiring yeah. actors out there. Professionally, on being human, what have been some of the hardest scenes for you guys to shoot? Oh man, there's been some hard stuff this year already. We just started. The yeah. first, the first two weeks for us were insane. Like it was. Well, not for me. <laughs> yeah, not for him. Pretty easy run the first couple. Of not for him. Like this young gentleman had the question about werewolves, and you know, spoiler alert, you, you get to see a little bit more of the wolf and a little bit less of this guy, at least to begin with. Fache, right? So you know, we're working with Sam, but Sam is like a headshot of Sam Huntington on a little Sam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, we, the the. The one that comes to mind for me was when Rebecca dies at the end of season one. Um, because at that point, there was early snowfall in Montreal. And so if you remember, in some of those episodes, some of the flashbacks, there was snow everywhere. But then when you come to modern day, there wasn't snow. Well, that was either because we got lucky when we shot, or they framed out the snow. They'd clean up all the snow and then shoot us against a wall and you wouldn't see the snow. So in that particular scene, it was below zero. I'm wearing a thin shirt. Sarah Allen's wearing just like a t-shirt and a thin leather jacket. We were, it was bad, like frostbitten hardcore. It was really bad. I remember, I, I finished that night because I had been yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I finished at like 3 a.m. And uh, which wasn't late, which is not late, by the way. Uh, and, and I got home and I got so sick after that. I, I, I still don't remember ever in my life being that sick. And I was, on, I was on set literally like quaking. Like I was, because I was up before you guys. And it was so cold. And I remember leaving set being so sick, like crying. And uh, this is how it was season one though. Like just in general, they worked us so hard. We were out there for 14 hours in that cold. I know, and then, yeah. and, then, and then I remember I left at three and you guys had another like four hours worth of shooting to do. And yeah, I was like, like six or seven, I think. I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't keep going right now. I drew a bath. I made a big bath of big, nice, warm water, and I got in it, and within five minutes, I'm like, wait a second, touch the water, it's cold. I'm like, whoa, and I literally sucked all the heat out of the, the bathtub, and then had to refill it. Heat sucker. The, the, hard, the hardest stuff on the show is all the physical stuff, yeah. and, and there's yeah. a lot of it. I mean, the hours are one thing, and the subject matter is one thing, because it's extremely emotionally demanding, but when you put on top of all that, the physical stuff that we have to do, and all of us like doing our own stunts, and we do as many as we can. Well, well most of us do. Most well, of us do. Sam Whitmer and I enjoy it. Yeah, two out of three of us do. No, I just stay in my trailer. <laughs> but that, that stuff gets really, really hard. Yeah, getting getting chained up like this for ten hours while Xander Berkeley yells at you, we're a rock star that day. That was tough. Lying, that was tough. lying on the stairs for three days? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was tough for you. Yeah. Painful. Well, you did your fall, right? I, I did when in the finale of season three, when Donna pulls me down the death spot, there's another fall down the stairs. And I did, well, I did the close up of it. And that's, I rolled backwards down the stairs and was advised not to by the stunt coordinator. But I was like, I'm down, I didn't do it, I didn't fucking do it. <laughs> and immediately, like, wrecked my neck. And I'm still dealing with it now. <laughs> I still have pain to hear because of the Xander Berkeley crucifixion scene. And I remember the director, he kept wanting to do this. Remember that? He kept wanting to do the one take over and over again because he was he gets so angry that I had like blood. This is the scene in, in season three when I'm getting tortured. And he kept getting so angry because I had blood kind of dripping out of my mouth. And he didn't want that for some reason. And I kept insisting, I'm like, I think the editors are going to want blood dripping out of the tortured guy's mouth, dude. You know? And, Eventually, they use the blood. Yeah. That was not good. Uh, um, so, for Sam, why would your character, you know, character why is Josh and Sally saying he killed his son at the end of the third season? Why? That is like, that is like the worst move. You promised all season, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to take care of you, and then you totally ditch him. Yeah. You mean, wait, but Sam went where or Aiden? But they're, they're, yeah. <laughs> what I did was worse. Yeah. Um, I, like, is that going to be 
season? In terms of why, wait, what was, first of all, she, she's asking why I would, when, they, when I took Kenny into the woods, why I didn't kill him. Now, was that a good choice or a bad choice from your point of view? Um, I think it was a bad choice. To not kill him. Correct. Okay, interesting. Because throughout the season, uh, well, throughout his, his immediate life, he, he'd seen the death of a lot of sons. Bernie, that was pretty hard on him. His son in the past, he lost his son. And he lost Henry from his own actions. Henry gets, you know, Henry dies because Aiden didn't have a plan in, in place of Henry's plan. And it was just too much for him. He couldn't lose another one. And then when he lied to Josh and Sally, it's selfish again. Yeah, I guess I, next time I'll just make sure to murder someone. Next time, yeah, I'll just murder. Next time, kill the abomination. When you say you're going to murder a child, you, you do it. Child. If there's a kid, especially if you promised your friends, dude, if you told your friends that you're going to go kill a defenseless kid, well, then you do it. Especially if you said afterward, oh yeah, I took care of it. It's like, well, that kid better be in pieces, bro. Yeah. That kid better be literally naked slow. It's, it's just proper roommate etiquette. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's get uh, one or two. God damn it. Uh, yes, ma'am. Like a fan interaction with them? Sam Huntington, you are the father. <laughs> That's just how we end the panel. That's it. <laughs> he had a, a fan had his kid. Um, I thought of one the other day, and I was like, oh, someone's going to ask this, and this will be my answer. Now I don't know. Yeah, um, to be honest, it's always really pleasant. Like, even when it is, even when you guys are crazy, um, it's always really pleasant. I like meeting everybody. There's never been a negative, I've never had a, had a negative. Well, there's, you know, when, that time when someone called you selfish for not murdering. <laughs> <laughs> that was, was kind of weird. That was really unpleasant. Remember how uncomfortable it was? It was weird, yeah. yeah. Chill fell over the room. Yeah. You had a painting, uh, it was connected to Superman, right? Somebody made, painted a picture of you as Jimmy Olsen, or, uh, was that, I thought that was, unless it was another, maybe it was a National War. It was probably a National War, yeah. yeah. It was probably, it was probably I get, I get my Jimmy's. <laughs> so, so, so many of those guys. It's, it's, we're, we're just a, uh, we're a dime a dozen. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get a final question. Matt. Yeah, that guy. Is oh, there he is. Yes. Question, guys. Okay, so whose idea was it to have cat and a dog? Well, I can't speak. Dog the cat man. Dog cat. Yeah. Dog, dog the cat man. Dog the cat man. Dude. When you were doing the whole <laughs> dance party scene. I want to say that was yours. I think it was my idea. I think so. I'm always pro featuring dog. He's the fifth roommate. Yeah, he is. Dog the Cat Man dude, if you guys are not aware of who this is, there's a little statue in the uh, in the apartment of this weird dog cat like right creature the that wears a, he's a, white a guy. catcher's mask yeah. and a little crown. Because he's the king of kings. <laughs> um, we've fallen in love with him. We've fallen in This is really bizarre. We can't tell whether the sculpture is a dog or a cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just kind of looks at, well, that was what it was. It was he's always wearing a casual mask. So we were like, oh, we were always like, oh, it's a dog, it's a dog, it's a dog. But you take a casual mask off, you're like, through the mask. It's a cat. Well, then here's the deal. Cat, damn it. He's half dog, half cat, half man, all dude. Dog the cat man dude. He's definitely got a male energy, that's for sure. That's right. Oh, yeah, he's definitely a guy. Oh, he's a dude. He's a dude. Trust me. But he's become a big part of the show, and, and he's definitely... The, fa the fans seem to notice him and love him. The fans love well, him. It's because we make such a big deal of him. Yeah, but I, I'm so surprised that I never see any, like, dog merchandise. What the hell is that about? Come on, Matt. <laughs> make it happen. Make it happen. Make it happen. Keychains. Does he have his own Twitter feed? Twitter okay, right? see? Yeah, Matt's a big that fan. That. Matt's a big fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other? Can we take more? Questions? Yeah, uh, let's. Uh, we can take a couple more questions. Um, we have wait, question. wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, 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 w
Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, so Laura Terry is a friend of mine. She, she's, um, she knows everything that's going on in terms of what's happening in Hollywood. And I, yeah, I read the script and, oh, well, I didn't read the script. <laughs> I read three pages of the script and was and read the word vampire and I was like, well, don't we have like seventy of these guys? I don't, I don't know why we need another one. And then she called me up and said, did you turn down the Being Human audition? I said, yeah. And she says, did you read the script? I'm like, sure. She's like, but you didn't though. I'm like, well, right. <laughs> and so when I read it, I felt like an idiot because I was like, oh, oh, this is about a, this is a dude who's fighting addiction. This is a drug addict. That's, that's interesting. It's about a dog. It's, it's about, about a dog. Man. Do, half, half dog, half, half cat, cat, half man. All dude. All dude. But, but here's the thing, he's all dude. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just trying to be human, and he's got so many things battling him inside. Dog, cat, man. And, but he just wants to be a dude. He just wants to be that dude. And he is one, though. At the end of the Deep day. Down. Until until Clarence Parnager shoots him, and he becomes a cop. <laughs> for for the people who get that, congratulations. Yeah, right over my head, that guy. Yeah. Dog, yeah. cat, man, dude, robo. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you guys suck. I hate you guys. <laughs> All right, with, real quickly, let's get yeah. this uh, young lady here. You have a question. Um, what was it like? What was it like live? It's tweeting? a mixed bag. Yeah, was it like live? Like, do you guys are you guys on Twitter? Do you guys? Do you guys do okay. So three of them. So <laughs> uh, we do the live tweeting thing every now and then. Sci-fi encourages it, and the. And the People really seem to like it, but for me, to be honest, it's kind of a mixed bag because I'm so focused on like like tweeting about it that I don't get to really watch the show. So yeah, yeah I don't see how. <laughs> no offense, I don't see how you can tweet live tweet the entire episode and enjoy the enjoy show. The show, especially when we're making fun of it so hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> And then you're doing it for the West Coast as well. Yeah, you we do, do it twice, both. right? Yeah, I, I do it twice. Yeah, you do it, yeah. We, I really, really like doing that because I love, it's such a different experience watching with the fans and yeah. seeing what they think at every moment. Um, and then it just makes you feel closer to them. And it's, I don't know, it's like we're all watching it together. It's, it like, yeah, that's what it's, so it's like watching with an audience. It's like a big yeah. sleepover yeah. party. It, yeah, it is. And I really, really like that. But, but I also like watching the episode. I'm just, you know, because we, we haven't really seen them. All right, guys. Well, I always like to end on a Twitter question. So uh, there we go. That was it. So a uh, big round of applause for these guys.